Hi, my name is Stephen Rafferty, and you're watching These Are Questions. This is the interview show where I ask people questions about things, life, and such not. Today's guest is a talented filmmaker that's moving up in the ranks of cinema. Please welcome Aaron Alberto. Aaron, welcome oh. to These Are Questions. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for uh, interviewing you. We've known each other for quite a while now, and I've been just seeing your successes growing as a filmmaker, and I'm just excited to ask you a series of questions, both random and also, uh, I guess, well, not random, random and not random questions. <laughs> <laughs> so um, before we get into the show itself, let me explain the rules of these are questions. Aaron, I'm going to ask you a series of questions it's going to be based around your career and aspirations, along with a mixture of questions that are borderline idiotic and, well, randomly stupid. Do you accept those terms? Uh, yeah, why not? Hey, it's 2021. Why not? <laughs> it's 2021. Anything can happen. Knock on wood. Hopefully nothing happens, but anything could theoretically happen. So, okay. Okay. So, Aaron. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Let's do this. Good, good, good. Internet, are you ready? I see a guy with a red camera and he's shooting right at me, so I'm going to take that as a yes. With that in mind, let's begin. So, Aaron, you are a successful filmmaker moving up in the cinema ranks. Can you explain to the audience how your journey started in film? So my journey started. Um, wow, that's a that's a that's a, a good question. It started a long time ago. I would say like a lot, like seven years ago, mm -hmm. around that time. This is a rough number. I started off as an actor. Um, acting has always been my first love, my first passion. I would act if I could act and be the next Denzel, Johnny Depp, Will Smith. You know, like I would love to do that all the time. But um, so I started off doing that. I started off doing extra work, and you know, I started getting you know gigs and stuff as a, an actor. You know, started out. Um, after I auditioned, I got on a couple commercials and I fell in love with this industry. And it's funny because I fell in love with this industry at, at a young age. When I was younger, I used to entertain everybody. You know, I used to be the joker in the class and the person you know, just entertain everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's funny, a little quick little tidbit here. When I was younger, this like really, really young, this one girl that I used to have a crush on. Yeah. I used to like, like want to be around her all the time. So I would like act in front of her, you know, like, like play characters and, she would just want to be around me because I play characters. So I was acting when I was that young. So it was just like, oh, why not? You know, and then what happened is um, after a while of doing the acting and stuff, I, I ventured into becoming a director also because I learned in this industry, you need to be versatile. Right. You can't just be one because nowadays, you know, you have to be the farce and everything, be able to do everything. And, um, you know, that's when I started to get into it and, I, you know, I started doing uh, my first film called um, I Before The, yep. which was actually, that's the time I think I met you guys. Yes. You met you specifically at uh, NSU. Mm -hmm. And um, we were doing, I was doing I Before The, you know, and it, it came out and became a, a worldwide sensation. And then I followed it up with The Power of Movement, uh, which was my first ever Oscar contending film, which was, it was crazy just to be a part of that. And, that's amazing. And it led me to... Oh, no, thank you. And then it led me to um, my current film, as you can see in the background right there, uh, Iron Temple, mm -hmm. which is also an Oscar contender this year. Wow. And <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, I'm just thankful for all this and, and, th and, my, and my journey, you know, and it's crazy. You're actually a part of my journey, which is cool because, you know, I've known you for that long, you know, even at NSU and everything. So, right. you know, thank, thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for, 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 for believing in me. Oh, you're welcome. I mean, I I respected you the moment I met you um, when you introduced me to your film projects. And I remember I remember specifically one of the goals you told me was that you wanted to see your film on the big screen. I know I'm going on kind of a tangent, but on the big screen, I remember that. And I, and I said to myself, I said, you know what, this guy's going to do it. The way he's working, the way he's doing his, his movements with his cameras, his camera cuts, and the way he just is acting as a professional. And I'm like, okay, this guy's, this guy's legit. This guy's going to do it. And then soon you know, I unfortunately wasn't there because of an emergency that happened, but I saw the pictures and the videos of I Before Thee on the big screen. So, like, that's just crazy. 
Yeah, it's it's um it's something that it, it's 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 hard to describe mm-hmm. what it is to go through and, and do something like that. Right. You know, I right now, you know, when I do it, you know, and I did it with Iron Temple this year. We had our our first ever Los Angeles um theatrical run, mm-hmm. and uh, we had a Miami theatrical run also. So just just going through that whole ordeal and everything was it was a very interesting and new experience you know sometimes sure. you get numb to that because it's like all right you know what else do we got to do and but I, i'm thankful you know that's the most that's the one word i could say i'm thankful for everyone that was a part of it i'm thankful for you know everyone that's doing all the you know even what we're, we're doing today you know i'm thankful for that too absolutely absolutely there's grace and humility so and you just have to appreciate where you came from and how far you've gone and how much more you're going to be going to in the future so Yes. Which is nothing yes. but successes, which you're getting there and we're getting there. And everybody that's watching, hopefully, is getting to the points where they need to go as well. Yes, correct. You're 100% correct. Thank you. So, you know, speaking of, you know, the film industry, you've played many different roles, both on and off screen. Which is your favorite position to be working in and why? That's a, that's a good question because... um <laughs> Because it, it's crazy because like most most individuals that I meet, they all say they all want to be actors. You know? sure. And again, I told like I said earlier, my acting is my first love. But the interest interesting part about that whole thing is that I like all the positions I play mm-hmm. because in different ways. You know, as an actor, I love the fact that I can become a character and become somebody that I'm not. You know, I could play, I love playing a bad guy. Like that, that's, I love playing bad guys. For some, and, and, and as you know, and most individuals know me, I'm not really a bad, bad type of guy. I'm like this fun loving, cool person, you know? And then just to play a bad, it's just like, if you think about this, when has Will Smith played a bad guy? Whew. You've never seen him play a bad guy. No. But if he does, it's just like, oh man, but I'm pretty sure he wants to. So that, you know, like those little things is just different, you know, becoming a character, becoming something you're not. And then on the directing side, what I love about the directing side is the, the fact that I could be creative. And, and that's the one thing I feel like the world has kind of, or just not even just the world, but society nowadays mm-hmm. hasn't really done a lot of be, be creative, you know, actually like go in depth and create something from, from nothing, you know, like, oh, let's just do, you know, let's not right. take let's not have Spider-Man 10 or Batman 50. You know what I mean? Let, let's create something different. And don't get me wrong. I love, I love those movies, but it's just, you know, I love the fact that I, the fact that I can create something that's never been done, which is in, in a crazy point is that with Iron Temple, I created a film that's never a film genre that's never been done. It's, it's called a docu narrative. You know, mm-hmm. usually they say it's a docu series uh, documentary and this, I made a documentary, which a movie was half narrative, half documentary. And that's never been, I mean, I, from my research, it's never been done. Wow. So, so it's something you're bringing something unique and different to the table, um, which, you know, a lot, especially in entertainment in general, you know, it's easier to be with the safe bet. Like, for example, you mentioned Spider-Man, you know, 10 and Batman 15, like they're always going to be draws because they've been known to be successful draws from a monetary standpoint and also from a, you know, uh, box office success standpoint. But sometimes you do need to go out of the box because when you go out of the box, sometimes, you know, gold and diamonds can be there per se, you know, you can go and get these nuggets of like amazing things and just new ways to look at the world and how you're looking at things and how you're viewing things through the lens of a camera or how you're trying to tell your story. Like there's new ways when you go outside the box. Um, so you got to do both sometimes inside, but sometimes you got to go out, you got to step outside. Yeah, you have to. It's, I feel that like creativity in, in society and in, in today's world is, is something that should be explored more as opposed to let's just do something we know that is. I mean, let's have Fast and the Furious 20. <laughs> Which they're, they're going to. That's happening. <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. Why? There's going to be a fast 40 by the time, you know, this is all said and done. Like, we're, we're going above and beyond. Yeah, there's going to be like Vin Diesel's grandson or something. It's like, okay, <laughs> this, is getting out of, this is getting out of hand. Mark, mark my words, man. Like when we come back to this interview, like 20 years later and it's fast 40, you're going to be like, oh, Steven said this, you know, Steven and Aaron said this on this interview on the internet all these years ago. Just yep, saying. it's true. It's true. Just it's saying. true. Just saying. So my next question, Aaron, is who would win in a fight? Yogi Bear or Fred Flintstone? 
Wow. That's a good question because you see there's parts to it. You see like Yogi Bear mm -hmm. is known for just, I, 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 all right, I'll answer it and I'll go into explanation. Okay. I think Fred Flint, you see, I don't know. It's hard because you see, here's the thing. Yogi Bear steals, doesn't, he's the one who steals all the food, right? Correct. And then runs. Yes. Fred Flintstone, when he drives his car, he's literally running. I mean, even when yeah. he's bowling, he's on his toes. So it's kind of interesting. I think they would both run away. I don't think they would actually fight each other. Oh, oh but if okay. I, okay. Okay. They, they both run. Like, there's no, I, I don't know. That's a good one. But I would say if I had to say in a fight, I'm going to. I'm going to go with Fred, man. I was always a Flintstones fan. You know, I like Fred. Plus, you got a friend named Barney Rubble. You know, Rubble just sounds a little, you know, like he's yeah. going to you know, rough you up. So Yeah, he's a bruiser. And, you know, he has and Bam Bam there and all. You know, the whole the whole cast of Ben, you know. I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, Dino comes in. I don't know. Well, the real one, if it's, <laughs> you know, Yogi versus Dino, because that's at least two animals fighting, I guess. <laughs> two cartoon Yogi's animals. Yogi's definitely winning that because Dino's afraid of everything. That's true. He, he would run away. Dino would run away. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He would be. Oh, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. Everything. <laughs> okay. I like that. I like your. I like the logic there. I'll. I'm gonna give you that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My next question is: Why are all the good restaurants in bad neighborhoods? Why are all the good restaurants in bad neighborhoods? Mm -hmm. You know that's that's a good question because um. <laughs> When I was living in Los Angeles, I was living in Los Angeles um, about two and a half years ago. Okay. And um, it's crazy. Like in Los Angeles, all the really good restaurants are really in the hood, which yeah. is it's crazy. A nice Chinese restaurant, a fried chicken restaurant, uh, you know, even donuts like <laughs> they were all in the hood. Um, you know, I'm, it's it's a good that's a good question, I guess, maybe because the people there are real. And you don't need to to really like impress anybody. You know, people are the food's gonna be good no matter what. They're gonna show up. Yeah. You know, even in Florida, it's the same thing. Like, um, my my background is um, my parents are both from the island, the Caribbean islands, you know, Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. and we have something down there called a roti, you know, which is like yeah. bread. Yeah, I mean, it's like a it's like a pita bread, but I don't know. It's hard to explain, but. But the best, their best restaurants literally are in the the hood area. And it's like, you go over there, you're like, man, I got to watch out. I got to look left. I got to look right. I got to look, <laughs> you know, but re reality is you're going over there just to get the food and the food is amazing. It's actually, it's shockingly amazing. You have to go in a rough time, in the rough areas to get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, I've learned that too much sometimes. Um, <laughs> I, I know when you go through the gates and you see the black gates and the more black pointed gates you're going the more bad you're in the area but the more likely you're going to an amazing restaurant so yeah you know. it, it's like it's like seeing the bars on the windows i don't know if you've ever seen yeah. that where it's like mm -hmm. it, it's always puzzled me to see bars on windows because i think to myself if there's a fire inside the house how do you get out you know how do you get out there's, there's bars on the window you, you gotta find a way to break the bar somehow you know i don't know how but you find a way <laughs> Yeah, it's or, like the bars are to protect people from stealing stuff in your house. But if you have a fire inside, you, you're, you're basically cooked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only the only cook cook I want is just a, a cook from a restaurant that's giving me food. So that's the only, yeah. that's yep. the only, only one I want. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you are an actor, you're a filmmaker, you've done a lot of things. But if you had the chance to shadow someone from another occupation that's not yours, which occupation would you choose and why? Hmm. That's a good question. That's another, that's, that's actually a, that's a hard question. It's the hardest one because, um, oof. It's, it's crazy. Cause I want to say like something in business, but I actually have my, my, my MBA in uh, my master's of business administration. So it's, it really wouldn't be that. Um, man, that's a very, very, would you would you would you say would you say president of the United States is a would that be considered an occupation? I yes yeah 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 I'll, I'll do a, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll do a Google search and then I'll type that in and then if it's if it's that if that's the answer then that's the answer. I'm gonna go with yes as my assumption. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I would I would definitely want to be um, president of the United States. 
And, and it's funny, I have, you know, my, my business partner told me um, a while back, um, Rajesh, he's my business partner at Able to Film Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I, I used to always tell me, he's like, you know what? You have the, the the personality to be a president. And I was like, are you serious? Like, yeah, you just you just have that that aura, that that likeness of, of being a president. So I actually, you know, it's funny. I'm not going to lie. If I have the opportunity, I would definitely run for president of the United States. Oh, wow. You heard it here on These Are Questions. We have a presidential run here. <laughs> Uh, what is it? What are we in 2021? What 2024? I mean, I, I I'm with it. I'm if I, if I can do it, I'll definitely do it. You know, I'll mean, probably be going up against. I'll probably be going up against the Rock, but you know, uh, I mean, it'll be good. <laughs> you you you're gonna go with the Rock. You might have a good shot. I mean, maybe better than Kanye last time. I'm not gonna get political, but you know, hey, you, you might have a you might have a running chance here. You never know. Yeah. You, can, you can write in. <laughs> no, I would. I would definitely. That's that's one thing. If I had an opportunity, I would definitely go. Okay. I would definitely do president of the United States. I would that's love to be president. Big goal, but hey, we gotta go for big goals. So hey, you, you never know. You never know. I could be. We could have an interview before the times, and you could be the future president of the U.S. Who knows? I. I yeah, I, I'm down for it. You know, would you want, would you, hey, if you want, I'll give you a job, man. You want to be the press secretary? I got you. No, I don't want to be anyone in politics. I don't want to. I, 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 I just, I, I've been to the White House, not in the White House, but I've been outside the White House. I've been where the, where the black gates are. That's, you know, because, you know, around around there are some nice restaurants there, if you know what I'm saying. But, you know, neighborhood. There you one. go. There but, you yeah, go. <laughs> they have a lot of big black gates, uh, just saying. Um, uh, but it, it's nice, but I'm good. I'm good. Do you think that you can train an octopus to play checkers? Of course. That's the easiest thing in the world. You got what? That's the easiest like thing eight. in the world. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't it, has, doesn't it have like eight eight arms, right? Uh, uh, Google eight arms. <laughs> Does an octopus have eight, yeah, like eight they arms? They have a lot of arms. Yeah, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight octo. Yeah. Eight, yeah. That's, that, that, yeah, that's he, right. And he, he, he could be playing... If it's eight arms, I think he could be playing eight games at a time. Like, boop, 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 oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what he's going to play checkers. He's going to play chess. He's going to do like backgammon. <laughs> Yahtzee. He could do all, he could do all. You want to hear an interesting story? This is sure. crazy. Sure. The, about octopus. The, the, the film I lost to last year. Yeah. With, uh, for the Oscars. Yeah. Was called something octopus I, the octopus beat me and for an oscar so i mean i'm like i'm not a fan of octopuses right now <laughs> they beat me all the time like oh, oh my god they had, they had an advantage eight eight i mean we're saying eight i hope it is eight I'm, i, I'm I like, hope so i'm gonna i'll google i'm gonna like i said i'll google it and hopefully it's there if not hey it is what it is <laughs> but they have multiple arms that's a factual statement they yeah have, they have, and they they have multiple arms yeah, and they suction cups and do, 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 you know. They suction yeah. to get they suction the cups to get the Oscars. Yeah. So they just wrap yeah. their tentacles and they took your yeah. Oscar away. <laughs> yeah, and then they shoot the black the black ink at you and yeah, you see oh they, my God. that's it. They're all they're ready to go. <laughs> What is this interview? Jesus, <laughs> it's all good. No, it's good. It's all good. Uh Okay, for your next film, you know, you're going to have to include octopus in it. That's what the Oscars want. They just want octopus. That's what it is. Yeah, that's it. They, that's they, it. It's whatever trend it is for that year. So, like, for 2020, mm -hmm. 2021, for their Oscars, you better bet it there had to be, like, a like not a tiger, because that's, like, Tiger King, but, like, I don't know, like, a gazelle or something. Like, something off <laughs> something. place. Yeah. That's something, right. something unusual, you know, the word it, the, yeah. the audience is like, ooh, okay, they see the Oscars there. Okay, that's a unique ah, animal see, there. And, and ah. It's funny. We do have something interesting in, in, in Iron Temple. So if, okay. they, if people haven't seen Iron Temple yet, you got to look at it and mm -hmm. see. Go check it out. Go check it out. Um, we'll <laughs> we'll link everything and put all the descriptions towards the end of the episode. And we'll have it in whatever we're watching. But we'll get to that. Um, but, okay, good to know. Good to know. So good, good. break a leg. Break all the legs <laughs> for your Oscar win when you do get it, when you eventually you'll get it. So <laughs> my next question is if you had the chance to direct any type of movie you haven't worked on yet, what genre would it be? And who would be your all-star celebrity cast? Oh, you're gonna like this. You're really gonna like this. And people are gonna laugh when I say this. They're gonna laugh because I would love, and not, not just to direct, I would love to be in it too. I want to do a musical. Oh. <laughs> I wanna do a musical. I want to sing it dead. <laughs> Hold on. Um, 
I, I've known you for a while, and uh, I mean, I know you're an entertain. You're very entertaining, and, and you know, I'll, I'll say that. But I wasn't expecting musical. I wasn't expecting that yeah, as an answer. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. I wanna, I wanna... La 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 la. Well, <laughs> I want to say, I want to sing it dead. So here is laughing. It's it's the one genre that I really, really, really want to want to try because okay. um, it's something. It definitely broadens your 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 horizon, you know, horizon, broadens your character and everything. And I would love to like I I, I you know you, when I was growing up, I used to watch a lot of um, Disney movies with my sister. Yeah, and I would you know I would always sing the songs. You know, Lion King. People laugh when I tell them I used to sing The Little Mermaid and Pocahontas and all those things, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not really a lot of male driven films, <laughs> but it's OK. Uh, but I used to sing all those songs and and we used to perform as little kids, like for our, for our parents and our grandparents and stuff. So I was just like, I would love to do a musical like I would literally like I would love to do it just just to try it out and see how I do. And I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. I wouldn't I mean, I wouldn't do cats, but. <laughs> well, that would be something there if you were in the cat suit there uh, or in the cat getup. That would be interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, that would be something. Yeah, I, I, I think my 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 professors at NSU would be. Yeah, I don't know that kid. <laughs> I don't uh, know that guy in the cat suit. Uh, no, nah, not really. <laughs> to be like, if we're gonna talk about that, no, because they have a big theater department and and like it's theater, like there's musical theater, there's you know, there's comedies, there's drop, there's dramas, there's dramedies, there's all kinds of stuff. So like, yeah, it, it's hey, true, it's true. It's I true. mean, but me and a cat suit, oh, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I mean, I mean, a little well, audience, you know, you can put the poll up. Maybe I don't know how we're gonna do this. You can vote. Do you want to see Aaron in a cat suit? <laughs> There you go. There you go. That's the audience question of the audience, day. Do you audience want to question. See your Please say no. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out when this comes out. So hey, we'll find out. But going back, who would be who would be in this musical? It doesn't have to be a cat musical, but who would be in this projected musical? Who would be in the who cast? Would be? Who would be the all stars? So I would. I mean, definitely, I would love. You know, my favorite um, actor of all time. You know that I've always mimicked myself as would be Johnny Depp, and uh, okay. Johnny Depp is the because and I love the what I love about Johnny Depp is he's able to play any character, any and every character, and that's that's me. Like I love becoming everything. Like I, I don't mind, I'm I'm open to everything. Like I'll I'll play any character, and that's what I love about him. He can play any character, and just to have him in there, like I would love to be on screen with him, and we're singing and dancing. I don't know. It's just. It's, <laughs> It just sounds weird saying it out loud. No, no one has ever. I've never told anybody this. This is wow. brand new. This is exclusive. 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 So okay, okay. Um, I mean, well, well now you got connections in LA. He's got connections. I guess. Hey, who knows? He has major connections. You could just you know send up send a message, send an IMDb. You know, hey, you know, here's my idea. Here's my pitch. Here's my 15 second elevator pitch. Like, yeah, let's go. Let's me and you singing and dancing. Singing and dancing. In the it's, rain. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. I, I, there may be a cat involved. I don't know. Um, and uh, and yeah. cats are afraid of water. <laughs> That's the name of it right so. there. That's the there name you of go. it. There cats, you go. Cats are afraid of water. Mm -hmm. Cats are mm -hmm. afraid of water. water. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you, heard it here. you heard it here first. You heard it here first. <laughs> so um, my next question, though, is where do you want to see yourself fit in the ever-changing future of cinema? Where I want to see myself fit. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to be, you know, the, I mean, obviously being myself in, in that in that realm, but, you know, if I had to use utilize somebody or showcase somebody, I would love to be the next Denzel slash Steven Spielberg, Christopher right. Nolan. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be in that upper echelon. You know, I'm working towards that right now. You know, I... I I work hard, you know, in order to get to those to those needs. Those those guys, you know, like years ago, I don't know if they still do it now. They probably put it up on on IG. But um, when I grew up, we we would always put something on the fridge, you know, and whatever was on the fridge, it was like your your goal. So if I was to go back to, to that to that time period, I'm like on my fridge right now would be a picture of Steven Spielberg, Denzel Washington. Christopher Nolan, you know, those guys are the people that inspire me to, to work every single day and, and just, just, just try to be somebody, you know, work hard. And that, that's my, that's my goal. You know, those guys are my, and, and not even just to get to their level and to their mastery, yeah. but 
to go beyond them, mm-hmm. to do things that they haven't done and, and be, to leave my mark on, on, on history, on, on, on reality. You know, it's so funny. Um, on the interview I was doing last night on the radio interview I was doing last night, the lady told me, the lady, the host was telling me on uh, Denise, she was telling me that, um, you know, what's so interesting about yourself is that you have left your imprint on in the world right now because obviously you've released three films so far you've yep. competed you're competing for, you've competed for two oscars in two consecutive years which is something that's never been done from from her research I'm oh wow sure i gotta do my own research mm-hmm. but just that whole trying to get to that level and succeed and leave my mark on history to the point where you know my the future my my nieces my nephews you know friends, their kids, whoever, you know, they can always look back and say, Hey, look, I saw this guy's stuff. He, he really, he really took it seriously and wanted to become, to leave his mark on history, you know? And that's, that's one of the things that is, it's a, it's a goal of mine is just to leave my mark on history so that the future generations can see that what I've done, it's not impossible unless you push forward and, and keep going, you know, just be determined and never give up. Yeah. Just keep moving forward. Um, and you're living proof that you're able to do that because you're coming from, and I'm not saying relatively unknown, I don't want to say that, but you came, uh, I don't want to say from nothing either, but I'm saying you came from a point where it's like, okay, I'm kind of the regular guy just coming through, and I said, I got an idea, I got a vision, I'm going to try to figure this out, I'm going to see how other uh, creators do what they do and try to take my own spin on that and just keep grinding and keep moving and you, you've seen it with the successes and the fact that you've already are competing for two consecutive Oscars within within a year and you're still continuing to do stuff like at the age that you are and at the ability that you are right now it's just going to keep going higher and higher like that's amazing you know so yeah. so take that for what it take that for what it is because you know, it's you don't get that every day. Not everyone's doing that. So, um, kudos. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a blessing to be a part of it and just to to do all these things. And again, <clears throat> the one word that I always use in every interview, everything that I do, anytime I make public appearances or anything, right? I say the one word is thankful. I'm thankful for everything because, you know, I I, I wouldn't be here without being thankful. You know, mm-hmm. there's so many things that that go into all these things. So. Very true. Set up good, wise words there. So, Aaron, I have one more question for you on these are questions. And this is a question that I'm asking every single guest this season for season three of these are questions. Um, I'm making a, a playlist this season, and I'm asking each guest to tell me, and you can give me up to five, five or below. Tell me, what are your top favorite songs that define your personality? Top favorite songs that define my personality. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, you can give me up to f- five. Let's put it there. Because yeah. every guest has given me something different so far. Huh. So it's been interesting. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> this is a good question. Thank you. Thank wow. You. This is, you know, I usually don't get stuck on questions, but this one actually has got me stuck. Thank you. That's, I, I, that's what we're here I for. Like I, I, think I like, get people I, I stuck. like that. Try to keep you because on your toes. I, I'm the type of person that I'm like kooky. I don't know if kooky is still a word. I'm kooky in one way, but I'm I also gotta, serious I, in one. I, I gotta have to Google kooky now and see if that's an actual word now. <laughs> I don't even think it's a word. We're gonna find out. I'm just, <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so my first song would probably be. Um, this is my inspirational song, so I think this would be it. Um, it would be "Time" by um, man, it's, it's it's part of the Inception soundtrack. It's called "Time." That's my inspirational song. Okay, I, I don't Time. know why I'm thinking "Time" by Cindy Lauper, but I don't I, I, I don't I don't know if it's that. Uh, I don't know why it just came up to my head. Wow, but, I kind of like that song. Time after time. Yeah, that's what I was thinking there. I, I don't know. That's what first came up when you said time. And I was like, I was I was expecting that. But then you said Inception soundtrack. I'm like, oh, I got to think about that. I haven't seen that movie in forever. So like. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. Okay. 
Time after time. Oh, God. <laughs> um, oh, man. Another one that would describe my personality would be, I would say, uh, I think it's called The Blueprint. Blueprint? Uh, Jay-Z, I think. Is it? Okay. I, think it's mm-hmm. Blueprint? I can't mm-hmm. remember. And the reason why I chose that song is because, um, like, we are we all have a, blue, a blueprint for, for life. And, and I try to use that as kind of, I think that's the name of the song. It's kind of hard these days to think of a song. Um, another one, <laughs> another one would be Hey Ya. <laughs> yeah. I say, you know that one. I know that one from Outcast. I know that song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say Hey Ya, you know. And it's funny because you know everyone will look at me and they'll be like, "Oh man, you're you're kind of a large individual. Why would you want to listen to like a kooky song like that?" <laughs> Again, that's the word. I, but um, <laughs> but no, but uh, no, Outcast is cool though. They got they got a bunch of hits. Like that's their probably their biggest one, most well known. I wouldn't say it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's just it's just it just has that vibe of you know, my baby, don't mess around. You can see I want to be in the musical. You know, hey. You know, and then you start doing a little shake yeah. it, shake it like a know. Polaroid. Pit. I don't know, something like that. I don't know. I, sh- 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 yeah, <laughs> let's mean? get them on. <laughs> That's my real personality right there. It's a shake it like I don't know. Hey, hey, hey! You be, you do you, man. You, you. That's what shows the authenticity. So, um, that that was three songs. I got three so far. Um, three. Um, yeah. so, you know what is crazy? This is actually. A hard, a hard topic because it's like there's so many songs that I could use to describe myself. But mm-hmm. um, another one, this this one I know. Well, I'm not saying I know, but um, I don't know if any one of the other people that you have um, interviewed so far. I don't think they would pick this because this is a shock. This is a complete shocker. Okay. Um, it's called uh, Nessum Dorma. Okay. Okay. By man, it's the guy's name. He's a guy. He's blind. He sings a song. Um, Bocelli, Andrea Bocelli. Andrea Bocelli, it's called Nessum Dorma. Okay. He, it's it's a rendition of it. He does a rendition of it. But uh, mm-hmm. that one, that would describe my personality a lot because it's a, very, it's a very calm song. Well, what they're saying in there is not very calm, but it's, it's uh, I think it's an Italian song. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think, I think so. But yeah, that would be, that's definitely one. I would think that's my, that's my, song that would really 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 describe me and the last one more it's it's a it's definitely a bob marley song okay but i'm just trying to figure out which one because it's kind of like oh man i can't even think is it three little birds i think it would be yeah i think it's three little don't worry every little thing is gonna be all right yeah that that's everyone says oh the songs every little thing is gonna be all right no it's actually three little birds you know so i think that would be it bob marley you know because i'm a chill person you know me chill every little thing's gonna be all right yeah so i would say those those are my songs okay all right interesting choices i got a good mix of different genres of music for this one so yeah. Okay. And there's a lot more. There's a lot more. Like I have some rock songs that I could go into. There's some rap songs. There's some Britney that- Spears songs. Okay. Oh, wait, we got five. I got my five. So I got my <laughs> There I you go. I, I didn't want to I didn't want to go too deep. You know, I, mean, I didn't want to you know, bye bye bye. You know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, bye bye bye. Cause this is the buying and the end of our, of the interview. <laughs> We are actually at the end of our These Are Questions interview. Aaron, it has been a pleasure talking with you and catching up and learning more about what you do in filmmaking. And um, I'm wishing you nothing but the best and successes for your future projects and wherever you would like to go in the future. Maybe in a musical, who knows? Um, but um, with that in mind, this is your time to shine. Anything you want to promote, anything you want to talk about, any last words, the floor or I guess the internet is yours. <laughs> the internet is mine. Yes. Um, yes. I, I want to say, first off, I want to say uh, thank you to, you know, Steven and you guys for putting this together. This was amazing. I had a great time. Um, keep, keep pushing forward. This is, this is an amazing show. And uh, I also want to say thank you to um, all the cast and the crew of all of my films, not just Iron Temple or the power of movement or I before the, I want to say thank you to everyone that has been a part of my journey so far and that will be and will continue to be a part of my journey. 
you know, I thank you guys so much for, for being a part of it because without any of you, this isn't done. Um, definitely, if you guys are, you have the time, I would love for you to check out um, all three of my films if you can. The first one, I Before the E, which is on all platforms, uh, every single digital platform you want to look at. Um, the Power of Movement, same thing on every, all the digital platforms and Iron Temple. They're all on digital platforms. Check it out. You know, if you guys like, hey, hopefully you like it, you know, it's just, just go out there and check it out. And, you know, wish, you know, I just want to say thank you. you know, thank you for everything, Stephen, for everything you've done and, and for allowing me to be here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. It's, it's very nice of you. So, um, and that's all I got for now. Uh, episodes are coming out as we're going on into the season and um you know anything any links that we promote anything you want to see it's going to be in our descriptions in the description things down below i don't even know my outro anymore i'm just like yes yeah, it's, 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 it's there it's going to be there people are going to look at it um it'll be there on our youtube and our spotify if you're listening on the audio feed for our podcast and um with that in mind all i gotta say is just um you've been watching slash listening slash viewing slash entertaining slash doing musicals of these are questions good night everyone or good morning wait you mean or good afternoon i don't know you could be watching this at like 7 45 uh jamaican standard time if that's the thing is it jamaican standard time yeah jamaican standard time's a thing um, so. yeah 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 you know i think it's eastern I think is it's it eastern, eastern. is it eastern yeah, yeah. Uh, now, I gotta, now, now I gotta Google <laughs> another thing on here. <laughs> I like that. Every every country has its own standard time. Cuba standard time. Cuba, yeah, CST. Yeah, <laughs> Dominican <laughs> Republic standard time. Yeah. I like that. That's a I, good I, one. I, I know we got Haitian time, then that's like 15 minutes after. So I, that's island time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, we also have, like you said, we have island time, which is like three hours behind. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell someone, hey, be there at three o'clock. They come at six, like. Wait, what's going on here? You told me to come at three. This is three o'clock. It's six o'clock. It's three o'clock in my time. There you go. There you go. There you go.